be sharing with you my 2022 wardrobe wish list. And what I want to do in this video is give you some inspiration about pieces that you could be looking for for yourself, and then also why having a wish list is so incredibly important if you want to have more conscious, slow fashion and to be able to really shop your closet and get more wear out of what you love. I do think that it's so good to dream and scheme. And of course, everybody's style and taste is so different, but you really have just got to like put your heart and soul into making your wardrobe wish list because it will help you feel better about your style overall. So if you're like me and you're trying to refine your style, you're trying to figure out how to dress for the different seasons of your life, and you really want to feel cute and comfortable and like chic and classic, and maybe you're you know, in your mid 30s or early 30s and you're looking at that next decade of life and you're starting to ask yourself, how can I build the wardrobe of my dreams? Then I think you're really gonna love this video. So let's go ahead and dive into my wardrobe wish list and talk about some of the pieces. My biggest weakness is definitely footwear. I've tried to create a Pinterest board that is very inspiring to me. I have several pieces from J. Crew that I've saved. J. Crew makes beautiful stuff and their footwear I think is like really the gem. You can get a really great pair of shoes for a good price. So I've got a pair of snakeskin or like alligator looking pumps. They're leather sandals with a heel and I think it's such an interesting take on an older style. They look very 1940s to me and I can see myself wearing this with everything in my wardrobe, whether it's shorts, jeans, slacks, skirts, it really doesn't matter. I can see myself pairing this with anything and everything. And then they've also got this really beautiful suede pump. It's like a Mary Jane, a classic Mary Jane with an ankle strap. And again, I just honestly think that this could be an everyday shoe. You could look so cute and so stunning in those shoes, like a classic pair of denim or even just, you know, your favorite skirt or, or dress or something like that. It's just a classic shoe and you really can't go wrong with that. And I'm just kind Kind of flabbergasted. I hope that they don't sell out. I think that they're sold out almost, at least in my sizes. And then the last J. Crew pair of shoes is this really beautiful strappy, very strappy, low-heeled um, sandal. I don't know if this is 100% something that I would end up loving, but as with every wardrobe wish list, you really need to try things on and give things a whirl. Stick with classic colors, stick with classic materials, and you really can't go wrong. I do need some boots in my life, and I'm <laughs> aspirationally wishing <laughs> for a pair of rouge snakeskin boots. However, I think they're really expensive. I think they're almost $500. Again, aspirational, but I have seen some on Poshmark. I've seen some on Vestiaire, so I might get them secondhand. However, I've also seen a pair of J. Crew secondhand ankle boots that are snakeskin or python. Sometimes it's just about getting the look, and it's not necessarily just about that one piece. And other times it really is about that piece because it's nailing the look, and you can't sacrifice on that. Another pair of really cute boots that I have been eyeballing for some time is a pair of lace-up boots, and that a lot of different companies are making them. You've got by far shoots. Rouge even made a pair of lace-up boots at one point, and then Ted Baker has a pair of lace-up boots. I think there's so many great options out there, but again, they're a little bit on the pricey side and they tend to sell out really fast. So I've got a pair of really beautiful nude cream lace-up boots from Ted Baker pinned on my Pinterest board. This is where I'm collecting my wardrobe wish list right now, and I think that they could be a forever piece. I don't have a pair of nude boots, and I feel like those would be like like filling in that gap of like you've got your black, you've got your brown and nude or beige and snakeskin. So that's something that's on my wardrobe wish list. And then final piece for footwear is a pair of the Chanel slingback pumps that have the black cap toe. I do think that those again are super aspirational. I have no idea if I'll ever end up getting those. Maybe a dupe would be in the offing. Maybe I should go for a dupe. I'm not really sure. And I know I said that the Chanel's were the last piece of shoes of footwear that's on my wardrobe wish list for 2022, but I do think that you need a good pair of tennis shoes, so I am definitely eyeballing some Sambas, potentially some Sambas, potentially some Converse, and I know that people find some of these shoes really not that comfortable, but again, it's all up to you, like what works best for you. And then a classic pair of black flats, which I'm still on the hunt for. Accessories are those things that I don't really tend to gravitate towards a whole lot, except for footwear for some reason, but I do really want this pair of kind of square, 
framed sunglasses from J. Crew that I think are just so chic and 90s looking. I can't get over them. And then of course, a Grecian fisherman's cap, which it's just so classic and so French. And I, of course, am obsessed with Léa Cédo, who wears that so beautifully. And I think it is one of those French girl accessories that it can be on the more kitschy side, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to end up there. Um, you can make it look more classic and chic. And I'm thinking about Camille from season one of Emily in Paris and that classic denim on denim outfit that she had with cowboy boots. Another wardrobe wish list item potentially and then um, the, like the red t-shirt and the fisherman cap it just looked classic and stunning to me I'm not a big handbag girl I think like the handbags that I have work really well for me right now so I'm not scheming for anything in particular I'm not overly obsessed with designer things but if I had to put a piece on my wardrobe wish list for a handbag it would definitely be the classic quilted Chanel crossbody which I mean it's so classic it's so chic but it is so expensive. <laughs> okay, so the next section I wanna talk about is like tailor pieces or suiting. Now, suiting is everywhere, and you guys know that I have a three-piece wool suit from Ralph Lauren that I got at the thrift store, and it was such a fine, I mean, easily several thousand dollars of a suit from the thrift store I got, and it's perfect. It is so perfect. And now you're seeing these things come out everywhere. And so there's a couple different things that are on my wish list. But hey guys, it's Editing Brie here. I am working on the video and I realized that I never actually said what I was talking about with the tailoring. And that is because my camera died. It like completely shut down. It overheated and shut down while I was recording. And I thought I had like somehow put the pieces together in my mind and repeated what I said before the camera shut off, but I didn't. And so what I wanted to share with you is that on my wardrobe wish list is a similar three-piece suit, but from Rouge, and it's in the white, the creamy white three-piece suit. And there are so many places that are offering different kinds of this three-piece suit. And there's one at Banana Republic that I noticed that looks like really high quality, but I can't vouch for the tailoring. Um, however, I will say with Rouge, the tailoring is always, always, on point like it's so perfect and that's part of why i think rouge is still a worthy brand but the price point is way 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 outside of a budget for me so again very aspirational and i think there were like a couple of other things from rouge i was considering but another piece of tailoring that i was interested in but the video cut off was a pair of reformation pants they're like a high-waisted linen trouser and they're kind of more like a wheat color they're not exactly cream they're kind of more like a linen-y, beige gray color. And so those are a couple things that I'm thinking about and I'm trying to find more affordable pieces that match these criteria. But again, I do think it's important to put stuff on your wish list that meets your aesthetic goals as well because you can always hunt for quality dupes that are less, you know, half the price, or you can keep your eyes peeled at the thrift store or on secondhand sites to get that same look, but for a better price. So those are my other two wardrobe wish list items. Now back to the original footage. The next piece from Rouge that is on my wardrobe wish list for 2022 is that beautiful lime green blouse that I suspected she was going to try to launch in her own collection and she did. So I'm so grateful to her for doing that and it's such a beautiful piece. And I know that that lime green green color is really unique and specific but I do think a lot of people can pull it off and as you can see on my Pinterest board there's like three different skin tones wearing that that same color so I think it's definitely something to try for a lot of people if you just if you just experiment you might be surprised and maybe it's not for everybody but I personally really love it so I love the Palomar blouse I think that's how you say it I think that could go so well with the suiting any kind of like jeans or trousers or skirts and you know maybe a pair of black linen shorts or something like that would be so cute which I have in my wardrobe and then next from Rouge I also have that kind of classic romantic flouncy blouse which you might be saying to yourself, Brie, you've got 1,000 of those. I do, I do, I do. Um, <laughs> I'm on the fence about this one, but it's definitely on my wardrobe wish list because it looks virtually identical to something that um, Jane Birkin wore. And I, I know that Jeanne Damas was looking at that specific style when she created this blouse. And I have seen her style it in a more casual way, a more chic way, less French girl, less florally, ruffly. So I think it's something that could be flexible and 
versatile. It just depends upon how you style it, but I'm obsessed with this look and I think I definitely want to try to recreate it. Also, I'm obsessed with Breton stripes and I'm looking to replace the Breton stripe top that I have from The Gap, which was a thrifted piece. I think The Gap still makes it, but I thought maybe I should branch out and try something that's a little bit different. So I was looking at maybe kind of starting, you know, where the stripes start about here and then down, you know, there's just classic stripes. So I did see one on Zara, but I've also seen some on La Redoute. And along those same lines, I'm looking for a striped sweater. So perhaps something that very similar to the striped top, but maybe it's navy with white stripes. Perhaps it's cream with navy stripes or black stripes. I love that polo style and I'm seeing them all over the place right now. I've seen some really high quality ones on and other stories and I've also seen some like medium to low quality ones on fast fashion sites like Mango and Zara or um, H&M. So I think really just trying to be more choosy and go for the classic cotton, 100% cotton, uh, maybe 100% cashmere, depends on where you're looking for a sweater like that. I have seen that Arquette has one and of course I can't get Arquette in the US but maybe there's um, some way I can shop for it secondhand on Vestiaire or Depop or something like that. But moving on to some final wardrobe pieces before I go into outerwear stuff, there's this blogger that I follow, a YouTuber, and for some reason I'm blanking on her name so hang on one second. She created this collection called Le Capsule, Le Capsule, and uh, you probably know exactly who I'm talking about as they say the name, Emily Lindmark. She has like one of the cutest YouTube channels. I love following her. I find her so incredibly inspiring. And she has several pieces in her capsule collection that really jump out at me. She's got that razor tank that's in that beautiful lime green color, which I'm thinking would be a fantastic way to try to further incorporate that color into my wardrobe. And she made this beautiful wrap linen skirt in black, and it has a blazer that goes with it too. I think with all things being equal, these pieces are very affordable and I love that her mission is one of sustainability and trying to use like the most sustainable fabrics possible. However, I do have a black linen skirt that I could have altered to be more of a mini skirt like this, but you know, I don't know. Maybe it's something I try to recreate on my own, but it's on my wish list. That's what I'm aiming for. And I know that this is a lot of stuff, but one final piece that I don't think I'll be able to get, but perhaps I could get it secondhand before, again, before moving on to outerwear, is this beautiful Reformation cardigan. And it's this cream cable knit cardigan that comes, you know, it's crew neck, it comes all the way up and it's got these great tortoiseshell buttons. And when I saw it styled with like high-waisted darker trousers, I just I just loved it, I fell in love. And so it's completely sold out, but who knows? Maybe there's an opportunity to add it into my wardrobe at some point. And now I wanna move on to outerwear and talk about kind of some outerwear pieces that would be so aspirational and so beautiful, but are definitely on my wardrobe wish list for this year. So I've got the bomber jacket. It's like the bombardier jacket, the classic Sherling bomber jacket that you see a ton of French girls wearing and I found out that they just have loads and loads and loads of these overstock pieces in France so you can go to the flea markets and find these things. They're not that common here in the United States but I think it's one of those pieces that have been reinterpreted by Celine and several other high-end designers and you can get them for a few hundred dollars on Vestiaire which is such a great deal you just have to keep your eyes peeled look on Etsy look on eBay you can find really great pieces and obviously that's a very winter piece um, so it's definitely not leading into spring or anything like that and you know you have to prioritize by season but again I've got another leather <laughs> jacket on my wardrobe wish list and it's just a classic kind of um, brownish clay colored fringe leather jacket. I have a dark brown fringe leather jacket that's vintage and I want to say it was actually for boys. It's like a boys leather jacket from the 50s. I think it's very chic and very cool but it's not like the best fit in the world because I think it's for boys. But I love this fringe leather jacket. I think it kind of came back a few years ago and I knew it was going to have a huge moment and it definitely has. And of course, I'm completely ripping off um, Alison Bornstein, but I've been re-watching Seinfeld lately and I saw this really great scene of Julia Louise Dreyfus character Elaine wearing this jacket. She's like literally so cute and perfect in it with a pair of horn rim glasses and I thought that's chic. I love it. So that 
that's two outerwear pieces and then like a third outerwear piece that I'm really keen on trying to add into my wardrobe is this cropped camel coat. It's like, <laughs> it looks like a camel coat, but it's actually just like a cropped blazer. Again, it's for winter. I really should be focusing on spring. I'm looking at my overall wardrobe and thinking how can I potentially maybe like save up for some pieces that could come later on in the year and start thinking ahead and planning ahead. But that seems like a lot to me. And I have no, like, I have no idea or purpose that this could actually happen. Like I, I'm going to try to focus on some of the spring pieces first. For me, those key pieces would definitely be the trousers and the sandals from J. Crew. I've got to get those trousers in. Sorry for the major change in light that just happened. Um, I think the trousers would be key and I think that the shoes from J. Crew would be key and maybe some things from Rouge, but we'll see. So I don't know. I would love to know in the comments section below what you think about the wardrobe wish list for 2022 and what your 2022 wardrobe wish list is. Do you have any tips? on where you create your wardrobe wish list and do you have any like specific pieces you're on the hunt for? I would love to know in the comments section below and if you really like this video then I think you're going to really love this video here that I made recently talking about this color, lime, which was so controversial. <laughs> so anyways, I love you guys so much. I hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye! I almost forgot to mention that I've started offering free consultations for virtual styling so you can book a free 20 minute consultation in the description box below. There's a little link that you can click on and head there and I've also tried to um, include resources so you can go to my Pinterest account where all of these things are pinned and you can check them out and follow me there or just go browse. So again, thank you so much and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!